I'm the only one in the room that thinks it's one of our biggest educational problems. It is a huge issue. Why is elementary spelling such a huge issue? Because that is where we teach kids how to cram, get a grade, and forget. In kindergarten, they do not know anything about this. They think you just come to school to learn. We hire teachers. When you interview them, you say, why do you want to be a teacher? And they talk about long-term learning and lifelong learners. And then you hire them to teach first grade, and you give them their spelling words on Monday, and they cram at home on Thursday night, and they spell them on Friday, and they forget them on Saturday. They, those six-year-old kids learn in about a month. They do not need those words after Friday. It is institutionalizing the system of short-term memory. And it is a huge problem. It goes on into chapter tests in middle school and high school. That's where we teach the kids. It's no longer about the learning. It's about the game. Remember when I showed you this slide and said that we got great people <clears throat> and terrible processes? I have heard my whole career teachers complain. I can't believe it. They spell the word right on Friday and they miss it in their story on Monday. And we put a Band-Aid on it and we don't solve it. It is a huge issue for us. Two story, an Oklahoma administrator had her granddaughter for the weekend. Granddaughter was in first grade. She'd been there for a month. She's dropped off at grandma's house for the weekend. Grandma's going to the backpack. Oh, honey, you see you had a spelling test. Yes, grandma. Good job, you only missed two words. Good job. Let's work on those two words. And what did she say to grandma after four weeks in first grade? No, grandma, we don't need those words anymore. <laughs> huge, huge problem for us. And then we've got poor statistics. We use data to communicate to kids that they're losers. Now, it's not intentional. We don't put a sign up that says these are the losers, but when you look at it, you know who the losers are. I was in a, a Phoenix classroom recently. <clears throat> There's the, uh, the, the rows are the names of the kids. And the columns, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They were learning, it's third grade, they're learning times tables. <clears throat> and when they had, quote, mastered the twos, they got a sticker after the name for two. And when they had, quote, mastered the threes, they got a sticker after their name for the three. It took two seconds at the most to say, oh, those are the loser kids and those are the winner kids. So one of the things, when you look at what are the root causes, why is that discouragement going down, down, down? Well, if every day you walk in, there's a big sign that says, I'm a loser, of course. When you dig down under root causes, there's things you find that you weren't expecting to find. <clears throat> Christy was sitting there dangling her legs, <clears throat> and right there by her elbow, she found a parallelogram. She said, how did I make it? I ripped open a toilet paper roll. She thought the only place you ever saw a parallelogram was in the tangram set at school. And there it was, right there by her elbow. had been there her whole life, and she didn't know it. You see, when you dig in, when you, when you start exploring and looking at what's below the surface causing the problems, you're surprised. You might find a parallelogram. Who knows? The secret of giving hope is continuous improvement. That's what gives hope. You think Jackson has improved? Hope that he's going to get better and better and better in his math? Absolutely. When you can look at that and say, wow, I got two questions right the first week, I got four the second week, I got five the second week, oop, slips down to four, up, up, up. That gives hope. It's a record of improvement.